welcome to the Five Minute Show with your host, Ben Barber. everybody and welcome back to the five minute show my name is ben barber uh and today my guest is one of my favorite people in the entire world uh he is a singer songwriter uh musician who lives in nashville now uh but he is from westerly and i i will save all of the rest of the compliments for when he actually comes on glenn thomas hey Glenn, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm um, glad to see you again virtually. You too. It's been a while. Um, we did not we uh, did not catch up at all before the show. No. Uh, just just uh, logistics of mics and whatnot. Um, how are you? How have you been? Uh, I've been good. Navigating the uh, sort of coming back to a year off as most people are doing and figuring out what that looks like, what, uh, what I actually enjoyed during the whole pause and what I kind of miss basically. So, uh, that's huge. That's huge. Let's, let's dive directly into that. All right. What did you enjoy? So, uh, you know, your, um, debut album as, as Glenn Thomas, as a solo artist, uh, was scheduled to come out right at the beginning of the pandemic and then did come out, but obviously you didn't get to like play shows and, you know, right. you had to do a virtual CD release party and, and, um, or album release that there's no right. I'm saying CD, but, um, although I do have it on the CD. Uh, so like, what did you enjoy about not being able to play music? Not about not being able to play music, but it, you know, with your profession and your passion, what did you, what did you actually enjoy from the last year? Well, uh, I guess because you couldn't do anything, the other side of that was not feeling like you had to do things. It, um, I, I mean, I, I, I guess it's kind of separate because live music, not playing shows really was a drag because that, is a huge part of like the process for me and what I love to do. And there's a weird uh, sort of alchemy and, and when a song is finished, it it's like, it has to be played for people a few times to sort of gauge the reaction or whether it, you know, is just in something that exists in my head and doesn't make sense out of it. Um, so I've written a ton of songs this year that I don't know how they're going to go. Cause I've never, really played them for a, an audience um and and that aside live music aside the things that i've really loved about the pause are just kind of taking a step back and and not having like a, a real immediacy with stuff like not oh i have to finish this because i have this show or i have to do this because uh it's needed by thursday you know i, I mean there are still deadlines of course i, I pivoted work and, and, and all that, but, um, just sort of like the boundaries of, of everyone's personal time was taken a lot more. Yes. Um, yeah. I think that that is, um, I think that pers perspective only lasts for so long, which is a, uh, which is something I've never heard, but I really like the, the, the way that that sounded, um, perspective only lasts for, for so long. So I think that like, while everybody is like, oh, you know, we're going to not take for granted all of the stuff that we took for granted before the pandemic. That's a nice feeling. But six months from now, like that feeling is going to be diluted. Totally. And, and another six months after that, it's going to be diluted. And another six months after that, it's going to be diluted. But, you know, the, the actual physical things that changed so much, like people not having to go into offices and realizing that they could take more time and that, you know, if a certain amount of work only takes a certain amount of time, that's okay. And you can do it from different places. And the, the you know, the immediacy stuff that you're talking about, that is all like practical way of life things 
that are uh, affecting most occupations and situations. Sure. And, um, and I think that, you know, to take stock of that stuff and that pause is huge. Um, and, and I think that the people that rush back to normal pre pandemic normal um, are going to be missing out on a, on a huge opportunity to uh, to really like identify what worked for them, what didn't work for them, and um, and figure out like how to create that personal space and that uh, that accounting of where their time goes. Yeah, completely. Uh, yeah, you summed it up great. I love that. Thank you very much um, for what you said, not for your uh, compliment. <laughs> um, what uh, and what did you miss most? Uh, I miss playing for people uh, and the, the in-personness of music, whether it's recording, whether it's collaborating in person with someone working on songs or, uh, or any of that. Certainly playing original music uh, for people. I miss that connection. Um, I really found that what I didn't miss, I used to play a ton of bars like Friday, Saturday, three hours of covers and uh, it was a good chunk of my income. So I had to figure out where to replace that with. And I don't miss those shows at all, but there was always a part of me that was like, Oh, I'm playing music and it's for money. That's the dream. But it, it really, that's not what I love about music. And I, I don't, I'm not going to say never. And I will do those things, especially if it's, you know, weddings for people I like and, and all that, or, you know, but the the desire to go back to doing that every weekend is not there. So that makes sense. Um, I was having uh, many similar conversations with Dave about you know the 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 grind of a gigging musician. Yeah. Um, isn't always the most rewarding thing. You know, no, sometimes no. sometimes it is, but it depends on like. So I think that again taking taking that and um that you know like feelings don't last all 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 the time but the practicality of it does and i know that like that's what i'm i'm excited to watch how this makes people especially you um grow in different areas as an artist right it's like it's like when you have like a plant and like a house plant and it grows in whatever direction the sunlight's coming. Right. You know, like it starts to reach towards that. And I think that that is going to be like really fascinating. Did you see the, um, have you seen the Bo Burnham documentary? Uh, not, not documentary, the Bo Burnham special. No, but I've seen a number of people post about it. And it's on my list this week. That is, something that it's it's like it's so perfectly obviously like it's it's huge in the zeitgeist right now and um and it's it's a it's a creative artistic piece for our time and it feels like he could have made it you know knowing everything about like his last special and his history and all of that you're like he could have made this at any time really like realistically um his his last special five years ago, six years ago, ended with him walking into a room and and being alone and off stage. And, you know, so so the fact that this one is about isolation and stuff feels like a logical next step, but it was the outside forces that pushed you into the creativity, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of those things. And it's just this beautiful piece of art. Like, it's not a comedy special. It's not a movie. It's, it's something different. And... Um, and I'm excited to watch uh, artists that that I'm a fan of um, explore the different directions that they've grown when the sunlight started coming through in a different way. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to hear your new music that you're uh, that you haven't been able to play for people. I'm always a FaceTime away, my friend. That's very true. I would. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's something like uh, I don't know. There's uh, something about being in person and hearing a song for the first time. Totally. And then also like, I don't want to like ever dump that onto people there. It feels like very like, Hey, I don't listen, know. I've said 
I've said profusely to the point of it being weird that um, that you are uh, my favorite songwriter. Like, and I don't mean my favorite songwriter that I know. I mean, like, I think you're legitimately my favorite songwriter of all time. So, um, for me personally, like, I don't think that you're necessarily the greatest. Like, I'm, I'm not having that conversation because um, I think that that's uh, all subjective anyway. But, uh, but I think that you are incredible and uh, having nothing to do with our friendship. Like, I think that um, I, I love every song that you've ever written. So, and, and I think that you have a really like wonderful artistic expression with your lyrics and, um, and uh, the, the, the poetry and the music together combined to make something really special. So you're never dumping it on me is what wow. I'm saying. I, I, you know, wholeheartedly appreciate that. That's, uh, you've always been a huge fan. So, uh, I have, I have, been I remember, fan. yeah, the crooked, words, fan. the crooked Words show. I, I think you took 10 CDs. I did. Yeah. I did. I was like, give me all of these. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go give them to the, to the high school kids that I'm doing a show with right now. And, um, and yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, I think that this is the first show that I've ever done for myself and I regretted it immediately. As soon as I hit the intro for this, this is the first show that I've ever done for myself. That doesn't have a theme song, uh, by you. Nice. Um, yeah. So I should, I should remedy that. Cause I don't no, like it. No, Keep I it don't there. like it. No, uh, I don't like it. Um, I like the intro. The intro is cool. Well, thank you. It was, it's very weird. Um, what, uh, so how, like, is there another new CD coming out? Are you going to, cause reassure me there's a window is, is fantastic and everybody should go pick it up. There's a link in the description All right, um, yeah. for, uh, for Glenn Thomas music.com. But is there, is there new music coming out? Are you excited to play shows around reassure me there's a window? So uh, are you holding off on new music? What, what, uh, what's the plan there? It, all, all of those. Yes. And <laughs> all, uh, I'm excited to play some shows with, the reassure me stuff. Um, but also new music. I, I can't sit still long enough to not play new music. And I've been recording, um, both on my own and with, uh, the musicians who did reassure me. Uh, let's see, I have a new song coming out next Thursday, the 17th, that kind of picks up where reassure me left off. It's in that same, you know, if you like that, I think you will like this. But then there's a whole other camp of music that I don't know, you know, kind of comes from stuff I used to do. It's kind of more edgy. It's kind of uh, so uh, before this gets very long. Yes, I'm working on recording a new album. It's just figuring out what what is this album going to be? Is it a continuation or is it a departure or or what? Um, are you intent on making your song titles shorter? No, and and good, it's gotten good, worse. It's gotten. Good. Thank God, because because you and I had a conversation. <laughs> you and I had a conversation at some point during the pandemic where you were like, "I gotta, I gotta cut it out. I gotta cut it out. I can't, I can't name the next thing. Reassure me, there's a window. It's too many words." No, I was like, worse. not at all. It's, it's yeah. I <laughs> I I don't think I actually tried. I think that was a, a lofty goal that I I'm not capable of. I don't think it's a goal that you should put any stock in. <laughs> no, all, all the new ones like start with a preposition and are like six words long. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not doing anything good. I love it. Um, so uh, what, what, what other things you had a, um, did the Grateful Dead cover come out during the pandemic? It yeah. Did, right. Yeah. That you came had, out you had a video. Fall. Yep. Um, um, that was awesome. That was uh, Black Money River. Yeah, that was just a fun thing. I, I love the Grateful Dead. And um, I think I, I it was like I put out the record and I was like, holy moly, I miss recording and all this and wanted to like go back into that world. Um, and a cover felt like a, a, a not easy, but appropriate thing to do. So it wasn't like boom, rapid fire, releasing new music. Yeah. It's something that is, you know, just a reinterpretation. It was, it was nice. Um, I've, yeah, I, your covers are great. And that was a great one. Um, 
and uh, and the music video for it was was really fun. Uh, and um, what uh, do you have any other? What what's your favorite thing to cover? I remember once your your going away show when you were leaving Westerly, um, you were like, "I'm only playing one cover in this show," and uh, here's the original. Here's an original boy band song from the original boy band and, oh, played, Beatles. and, then, and then you played a Beatles cover right. and I was like, nice. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. That's uh, hilarious. Um, I definitely still your, use that line. I, it's a great line and I'm sorry. I just ruined it. For no, it's fine. I get, I get, shows. I get like two jokes and then I just reuse them for years. It's uh, my favorite joke that you, that you say, cause it'll never get old is um, I probably is like some form of, I promise the next one's going to be upbeat. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> That's an easy one because I have like one upbeat song, <laughs> and it's never that one. Uh, what is your your new music that you wrote this year? Like what? And this is probably the last music question that I'm going to ask. Your last mu- uh, no, your music that you wrote this year. Like, what do you think was the pandemic and the isolation and stuff? Was that an influence, or were you trying to not write about that? Um, it's weird. I, at first I was actively trying to write about it, uh, for two reasons. One, just because I was like, this is so topical. What do I have to say? Uh, and two, because, uh, I work for a licensing company that was like, we need, uh, pandemic music for like commercials and stuff. This is so, you know, topical. We're getting a ton of requests. What do you got? So it was, I was trying to capitalize on on that uh and then i just kept hitting dead ends i was like i i need more time to reflect on this i don't really know how i feel uh because honestly at the time just uh it was so much sitting at home not doing anything i I didn't know what to make of it i don't know there's not much there until you go inward and like you have all that time. So it becomes like, yeah. Uh, so outwardly, no, it didn't affect me, but it, it definitely did affect my music because I wound up spending a lot of time thinking like, okay, what are the songs I want to write? What is it about the songs I write that I like? Do they all have to be like probing into like sad human experience or can they just be like, I don't listen to that kind of music. I listen to fish and I listen to like, goofy music and then i i write i don't know really like lyric forward sad stuff so i i i I actively tried to write stuff that i didn't know at the time maybe what it meant and it was just kind of fun uh and i I definitely still wrote a lot of sad stuff but uh i I just want to say i just want to say trey can get pretty sad no for sure for sure (laughs) but out like the you there know, are two songs. Like, there are two songs ever in my life that um, that made me ball within the first three lines, and they were uh, "Miss You" by oh, Fish yeah. and uh, "When You Are Gone." Oh by, wow! By by you. So good company with Trey. Um, yeah, those are the those two songs uh, are the only songs ever that have made me cry before they even got done with the verse. Um, well, it's, uh, I have this conversation with my fiance because, uh, the only, I, aside from a handful of times that I've, you know, been very sad about something and, uh, cried, she's like, the only times I see you cry are at fish shows every time without fail. The first song, I'm just so overwhelmed in the room. I'm like, I start laughing and then I just start weeping. It's so dumb, but, uh, no, no, that's nice. I think that's awesome. Um, are you are you going to are you going to any shows? I know that you are a lover of music, so are you? Are you- yeah, I I am going to both. Uh, they're playing in Nashville two nights, so I'm going to both of those. Uh, and that was that was all I could get tickets for. Nice. Um, what are your? Uh, so you know, good luck to her. She's going to get to see you cry again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are? Uh, what are you looking forward to? Are you, you're still in Nashville, right? You, I know that you you moved. Yeah, and you're still in the 
um, general area yep. where you were. What is um, what do you like about being down there, and uh, and how can I get you to come back home so we can hang out? Well, I definitely want to come back <laughs> as much as I can. And now that like traveling is sort of back on, I will be coming back more often. Um, I like the the sort of the way music is held in such regard here, uh, just in terms of like professionalism and how uh, there's a million musicians here and they're all doing it in their own way. And, and that is totally fine. There's not like a one kind of cookie cutter yeah. you know, thing. And, and just the, like, I moved here in my new England mindset of like, everyone's kind of like salty and provincial and, uh, you know, it's like, who are you and who do you know kind of thing. But here it's like, Oh, nice to meet you. You're a musician. You should meet this person and this person. Like it's so friendly here because most people, you know, moved here the same way you did at some point because, you know, they needed to explore what was here. Yeah. That's so. the, um, it's, you know, LA is full of actors. Nashville yeah, is yeah. full of musicians. Everybody that, uh, wanted more. And, um, that's, that's, and wanted to be surrounded by it, you know, and that, right. that, can, that can create negative atmospheres, but uh, I love that it can create really, really overwhelmingly positive ones too. And yeah, um, there's plenty of negative stuff to be found. Believe me, I uh, could, I could go that route if you'd like. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, what are your, um, cause this has been coming up for me a lot recently. Uh, like, what are your thoughts on collaboration versus like autonomy? That's a good question. Uh, because so much of songwriting here uh, is like four people in a room writing. It, you, sometimes there's not even a guitar or a piano. It's just everyone on their laptop and they're like, what do we want to write about? Like, you know, the, the sort of like country and pop music machine. Yep. And the thing I thought I wanted to do when I moved here, be a professional songwriter. And the more I did that, the more sort of disconnected to the art it was. Um, not to say I haven't had great experiences doing that. Uh, it's just not what I prefer. Uh, and, and the other thing that is weird is you get into a room and there's this pressure. It's like, okay, it's 11 a.m. Let's try and wrap this up by one or two and like have a song. It's just very uh, sterile. Yeah. Um, but outside of the writing thing, I love collaboration. Like I like, I, I can record obviously and I can produce other people, but my own stuff, I want to work with other people to have outside opinions and kind of like, what do you hear in the song versus what do I hear? And where can we kind of, um, hash out those ideas? So I like collaboration. It's just not, a hard and fast and it obviously has to be the right person. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, collaboration is amazing and like gives things energy and life sometimes. And, and yet when you're, you know, you're a pure artist, like that's, it's completely in your DNA. Um, you, you want that. Like sometimes the, sometimes it's really fun to, sure. to, to do whatever, like, um, to do whatever that might be, uh, on, in, you know, writing a, writing a song in three hours in an office building, like with parameters around it can be really fun. Yeah, totally. And then, and then also, so I think that that's great. And I think that that goes for everything. Like, I feel, I'm feeling the same way a lot right now. Like there are, there are different projects that I've always wanted to do. And I'm like, all right, let's, I have like some people that I know that would be great on this. And then I don't have to be the full creative driving force on that. Sure. And then, and then there's other things where I'm like, this is mine. Like I want <laughs> this part's mine. Um, well, I, so. and even on like non, you know, song and art, art uh, stuff per se, like I, video work and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had people ask me like, Oh, can uh, we edit this with you? Something I've been hired to edit or, or put together. And it's like, can we, you know, 
or do you want to work with uh, another one of our friends? And, and it, I always have to say no, because it's, uh, I don't necessarily know the person. And even if I do, I have my own kind of approach and it's, uh, it's, it's just, it winds up being a lot harder. Yeah. Editing with someone else is my least favorite thing to do in the world. Yeah. In, in regards to, uh, production. I stuff. totally, yeah. I, like, yeah. uh, you know, creating is one thing, but like the sculpting of it yeah. becomes like, becomes incredibly tedious when you try to work with somebody, especially if it's not somebody that you're comfortable with and know right. very well. And you end up like talking about the same thing seven different times because you don't, you're not communicating well. Right, right, right. Um, I completely understand where you're coming from on that. Yeah. Uh, but what, um, I'll wrap it up with this. Uh, what else has been going on <laughs> for you? What's, uh, What's what's Glenn? I won't say your real last name's life looking like these days. How are uh, you doing? I, I, I'm good. I've i been uh, doing some different uh, things. That one of the things during the the pandemic, uh, I I realized like I have all these sort of routines that I love and don't give myself time to do in you know normal life, and I'm like, nope, I'm doing this every day because that's what makes me happy and and i can rearrange the rest of it uh to do those things like uh i love just getting up and not going right to the computer and that's a hard thing to do because like the phone says you have wh however many emails and stuff and i just i let i let just let it sit um and uh i've gotten into birding recently which is another uh it's like a form of meditation for me. It's just a nice way to, I don't know. I know what, like what? five birds that I can name five birds. So I'm just, I'm, it feels like being a kid and like being just like looking at something in awe and not naming it and not knowing how to classify it. I have experienced that so much recently. We moved to a new neighborhood and it's a lot more, um, I don't know, like neighborhoody, like it's there, there's trees and, and, uh, and more nature around and it's less of the congested downtown area. Nice. And, and, um, so I've seen so many animals, uh, on my walks in the morning and, um, and, and two things have happened that both made me think of you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> number one, was I see maybe like 500 Orioles every week. Right. Um, you jerk. And I, yeah. and I immediately, and, and, and then the song is in my head, the rest of the, the walk. Uh, and I know what an Oriole looks like, and I'm very happy about that. I'm proud of myself. But number two is um, there is a, I was sitting out here last week looking uh, at this tree in my backyard. And I was like, is that a sycamore? What is a sycamore? I yeah. don't know. And then I was like, how does Glenn know all this stuff? How do you, I, I was, I was like, you're just sitting in your backyard. And I'll, and like, this is my, I'm like, how do you know that the bird outside is an Oriole? Like that's, I, I got like angry about how observant you are. Yeah. I, it's one of those things. Like I say what I know, which I like show yes. my whole cards. I, cause and, beyond yes. that, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, that, and that's and that's what it is, right? Like that's what everybody does, right? And then you, and then when, like when you admire somebody, which I I do, I admire you. You're like, man, they know so much more stuff than I do. No, about and not. and it's yeah, that, but that happens all the time. Do you remember last year when um right at the beginning of the pandemic, you were uh the the first surprise guest on Come Waste Your Time. Oh yeah. Um, and and uh, none of us knew what Animal Crossing was. Yes. But we knew that it was a big deal. <laughs> so, yeah. we just, so we just took like 10 minutes pretending to explain what it was to each other. That was awesome. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was my favorite. If I get one more FaceTime during this interview, I'm going to freak out. I, uh, I went during the intro, I made sure to put my phone on uh, airplane because it, I don't know how to turn this off. Maybe you know it like goes crazy loud through the computer, and it just 
Uh, it's I don't like that. I do know how to turn it off. I'll tell you in a minute. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Glenn, where can people find you? Uh, Glenn Thomas Music. Dot com uh glenn thomas music across socials and if you're in westerly and want to see a show uh june 25th at the knickerbocker full band full strings uh it'll be a, a real hoot and upbeat night that's amazing i can't wait for that i sprayed bug spray Ugh. before we started and it's all come back at me yeah I'm so sorry. No, I'm sorry. That's not a pleasant smell or anything. No, it's it's in my throat, I think. Ugh. Yeah, I got to go inside and get water. All um, right. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because <laughs> we should have talked about the Nick thing more. Yeah. The Nick, uh, you are opening the Nick back up. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I was very touched uh, to be asked to do that. And um, when I was asked, I was like, all right let's do it up and book a big band book a string quartet uh and enough tickets have sold to pay for all of those people so uh, i'm happy about that uh but yeah thor jensen's playing guitar uh cam old drummer for wild sun um yeah my dad is playing keys and it'll be a great night that sounds so amazing um i have something to do that night and i'm very upset about it i oh, just no realized that right now no i'm very upset um there will be video i i uh i have someone filming so uh all right well that's wonderful um i'm very mad at miskwamika beach for making me do something else that night but uh i'm glad and um i don't know how long you're here when you when you come back but uh i'll be there for know, a few weeks so let's get together yeah let's grab a let's grab a drink or something we can go birding i would love that Cool. I would, I would too. I'll, I'll point at things I don't know. And <laughs> there should be, is there an app for that? Yeah, there is. And I can tell you them. I got some good ones. Uh, they <laughs> do all the work for you. Amazing. Yeah. yeah I want to be as lazy as possible in this, exactly. in this relaxing, uh, in this relaxing situation. That's it. That's yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Great talking to you, Ben. Thanks you for too. having me. Thank you, man. See you soon. See ya. Well, that was the amazing Glenn Thomas. Um, I mean, really, sincerely, go check out his music. Um, you can find it at Glenn Thomas Music. You can find it uh, anywhere that you listen to music, uh, realistically, I, I believe. Um, and all of the links are in uh, are on his website. Reassure Me There's a Window is uh, fantastic. His debut studio album um, as himself. You can check out all of the Wild Sun stuff. You can also check out Live at the Savoy, uh, which is a wonderful live acoustic show um, that I have played constantly um, for years. So thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. Check out uh, hopefully it's not sold out. Glenn, is it sold out? Did you say it was sold out? No, it's not sold out. Hold on. I'm bringing you back in. No, it's not sold out yet. Just over halfway. Okay. Where can people get tickets? Uh, Nick, K-N-I-C-K, music.org. All right. I'll put that in the description for uh, for the Instagram version of this. Thanks, buddy. Cool. Thanks, Ben. All right. That's it. Uh, thanks, guys, and we'll see you later. Looking for more than five minutes? Click the contact links in the description of this episode.